Hello and welcome to the next challenge. In this challenge, we're going to be moving a box up and down based on uh, click inputs. So let's take a look at the final product. Here we have a box. We have a button here that says move up. As soon as we click the move up button, it moves the square up as we go along. Now there's a couple of different ways you can do this. Uh, let's see which way you come up with. And we'll talk about the solution. But let's talk about the starter code sandbox. Here we have our header for move the box. We have a button and you'll have to handle the click event on this button. And then we also have a box and we've given you a little bit of a hint on how we want to do this. And this is only one way to do it. You can do it any way you want, but inline styles is a simple way to do it. So this is gonna be your starter for this challenge. Let's go back to our slides. All right, so now is a good time to pause the video, play around with the code sandbox starter, and then once you're ready, come back and we'll talk about the solution. All right, welcome back to the solution. Let's start coding this thing up so that we can have this button move the box up and out of the way. Here we have our code sandbox starter, and the technique we're gonna use here is inline styles. There are definitely other ways to do this. But the one way we're gonna look at is basically we're going to have an object here. And inside of this object, we're gonna use transform, translate Y, and we're gonna pass this some pixels, like 50 pixels. And this all has to be a giant string since we are in a JavaScript object. There we go. Translate Y 50 pixels. And if I change this to 250, notice how it jumps down. Let's go to 350, it goes further down. And that's basically how we're going to change all of this stuff out so that this button is going to change the variable for this 350 and then we'll change it to 300, we'll change it to 250, we'll change it to 200 and that is gonna be how we move the box. So there's a couple different techniques we'll use here. We'll use use state and we'll have a click event on the button. To start us off, we're going to import use state and that's the only one we'll need. We're gonna go const offset top and set offset top is equal to use state. And I'm gonna start us off with 300. So that way, when we have our box, we're gonna start off with translate 300. We're gonna set a variable here, but since this is a string and we want to kind of have this inside of here, we can do this as ES6 template backticks. And now we can use offset top here. All right, so now that's set offset by 300 pixels on the top right there. And then the second thing we have to do is on click is we're gonna handle this by move box up. All right, we haven't defined this function yet. Let's do that now. We're gonna say function move box up. And what we'll do here is we're just going to offset top and we're gonna decrement it by let's say 50. And that way we can move the box 50 pixels up every time we click the button. You can actually change this number to be a little bit lower. And let's actually try it. Offset, well, set offset top. And we're gonna go offset top minus 20. So as we change this, immediately React is gonna say, oh, offset top changed. Let's re-render this whole thing with a new offset top variable and the box should start moving up. So if we click this right here, notice how it goes up 20 pixels every time. You can change this to 50 or something greater so that it makes bigger jumps and it's more uh, prominent. Click, 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 up, up, up as we go. And that's how we're going to handle moving our box up. We've created a state variable right here for offset top. We've bound it to inline styles here. And then we've actually handled the click event with move box up our new function. Another way you could do this, well, to expand on this, is we can actually create this const uh, box styles here is equal to, and we're just gonna move this whole thing right here. Actually, that's just a single curly because it's one object right there. And then we can use box styles right here like that. And that way it's a little bit cleaner. You have all your variables created at the top and then there's no real logic happening inside of the uh, template itself. All right. Thanks for watching this next challenge and we'll see you in the next one.